Yeah. Seems like that. There's there's not a lot of latitude in there. So I got a. You're got okay. I uh, appreciate everyone being here this evening. I'll make sure I can be heard, hopefully. Uh, welcome to the City Council meeting, and we'd like to start off this meeting this evening with our Pledge of Allegiance, and then we'll have our invocation to follow. If you'd all please stand and join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Pastor Flanell. Eternal God and kind Father, we thank you once again for the many blessings you bestowed upon us, especially with your son, Jesus Christ, and his finished work on the cross. We ask your continued blessings and protection and wisdom poured on our mayor and city council and their assistants, our fire department, our police department, and our first responders. We ask you to bless this meeting on tonight for the citizens of Bonner Springs. And after the meeting has been conducted, we ask that you see us home safely and find the things that we left as, as we left it. Lord, we bless your name on tonight. We ask you to teach us to love one another as you have loved us. Keep us from evil. In Jesus' name, amen. First one this evening, or proclamation this evening is with transit drivers. So, Lauren, if you'd like to come forward, you're back in here. You're not here right now, but we have a proclamation for both of you. Uh, we can have the first one and then we'll have the second one for you. But the proclamation reads: Whereas Sidley Transit is an important public service for the residents of Bonner Springs, operating Monday through providing transportation options to our residents and visitors. Whereas many of our residents would not be able to go to the grocery store, the bank, doctor's appointments, shopping, and many other places to stop for hosting transit. And whereas our Sibley transit drivers provide about 7,000 rides annually to, place, to places in Bonner Springs. And whereas they do this tirelessly with a friend Drivers impact many lives, enabling many of our residents to maintain independence in their daily lives. And whereas National Transit Drivers Appreciation Day is March 18th and 19th this year, and whereas it is important, appropriate to recognize the value of our Sibley drivers, now therefore I, Jeff Harrington, Mayor of Bonner Springs Transit, do hereby proclaim March 18th and 19th this year as Bob Chapman. It's the fun part that everybody likes. Now we get to go on to our second presentation, the Wyandotte County Appraiser's Valuation Update. <laughs> That's what I was leading up to. Because this is, um, it's a matter of importance to the whole community. Um, I'm Matt Willett, the county appraiser. Janae Robbins, deputy county appraiser, is with me here this evening as well. And again, I appreciate the op Go ahead. Is that better? Okay. I apologize for that. Um, again, thanks for the opportunity to come and visit about this. This is a version of a presentation that we give to the county commission um, every year. And values are up again this year. So I thought it was important to reach out to the other taxing jurisdictions and give you guys kind of that same preview, for lack of a better term, of what values are doing. 
Again, we've had introductions. Um, I've been with the county about 17 years, two as county appraiser. Uh, Janae has been with the county 19 years, uh, two as deputy county appraiser. And we've got 28 employees in the appraiser's office, and every year we value 60, 67,000 parcels. It's as of January 1st every year. Um, so it's, it's a pretty sizable um, project that we go through. I always start these off with a couple of items. Um, I let people know that appraisers don't create value. Buyers and sellers create value by their choices in the marketplace, what they're transacting property at. As a county appraiser, I've got the legal responsibility to analyze those transactions and establish a fair market value. And that's as an independent office within the UG. All my valuations are set prior to the budget process without any outside influence. The purpose of the appraisal process is I'm out to appraise all property at fair market value. This allows for an equitable dis distribution of the tax burden. Again, values are market-based. Um, budget and valuation are separate processes. In the state of Kansas, residential parcels are assessed at 11.5% of market value, while commercial parcels are assessed at 25% of market value. Um, and again, it's in there again because it's, I feel like it's important. There is a constitutional necessity that we appraise at fair market value. Those assessment rates, again, that we talked about earlier um, are set by the Constitution. And we are overseen by the Property Valuation Division, State of Kansas, both on how we appraise property and the statistics that result. The big statistic that we look at is what's called an appraisal ratio. That's a comparison of what properties are selling for compared to what we value them at. An acceptable range is between 90 and 110. I'll show that typically in Wyandotte County over the last three or four years on residential property, it's been between 92 and 93 percent. We're actually appraising at slightly under market value. Again, at the median, that doesn't mean they're all that way, but most of them are. Um, a bit about the taxation process. Our effective date for appraisal is January 1st of the tax year. We send out valuation notices. This year it was March 9th, so I'm pretty sure everybody has received theirs. Um, our appeal deadline this year is April 10th. That's a few days longer than what's typical. The deadline date would have fallen on Good Friday. We extended it because I want everybody that wants to come in and have an appeal to have that opportunity. Once we're done with that, we certify the values to the county clerk. You guys, as the taxing jurisdictions, get those values, uh, assessed values, start the budget process, set a mill levy, that's a tax bill, and then we start the whole thing over again. We get a lot of questions um, of why a value would change from last year. The biggest thing right now is the real estate market. Even through 2022, and we're still seeing it into 2023, people are just paying more for properties. There's still a very tight supply and a lot of demand. Um, we also reinspect once every six years. So if there are things that have changed about the property, for better or worse, we're going to recognize that in our values as of January 1st. Um, and then, you know, if a sale, if a subject property sells, we're going to go and look at it, and that's going to be um, looked at as well. The housing market did continue to appreciate pretty steadily in 2022. The 2022 data is important because it's as of January 1st. Into 2023, what we see is sales price, price growth is slowing, um, but the housing supply still remains very low. Monthly rents have gone up more in, some, in a lot of cases than what a mortgage payment would be, so it's still an affordable option from that perspective. But moving into 2023, what I think we're going to see is the sales price increases and the appreciation to slow down due to the higher mortgage rates. Um, but these higher prices that we've seen over the last three years, they're, they're the normal for the area right now. They're just, they're there, and I don't see them backsliding. Uh, just to look at some countywide sales data, our median sales price in Wyandotte County was $195,000, according to MLS, in 2022. That's up from $180,000 the prior year. Um, our days on market are still at 22 days. That is still very much a seller's market and a very tight supply situation. One thing we've noticed in 2022 that's different from the prior year is the overbidding is all but disappeared. 
buyer or sellers are receiving 99.7% of their asking price, um, which indicates they're pricing them right and we're not having the, the frenzy that we were having there for a minute. Another part of that though is that sellers have priced that into what they're asking. Uh, talking about the flattening, this chart shows that all the way through about September of 2022, we had a lot of price appreciation. It leveled off about the time school started, which is typically what we'll see, um, and started taking back up in January. Again, don't know what's going to happen, but the prediction is a more normal, normal rate of appreciation compared to what we've had the last few years. Part of the reason we're still seeing price growth here um, is that Wyandotte County is an affordable, part of an affordable metro. Um, if we look around surrounding counties, our median sales price is $40,000 below uh, the next closest county or community. Um, and again, that is driving people to come here and look for houses that they can afford, where in a lot of other communities, that's not the case. That is part of what's driving prices up here. One thing we look at for trying to gauge the health of the real estate market is foreclosures. Um, typically, we're going to see about 400 a year in Wyandotte County if we don't have a housing crisis. Um, if we look at this chart, back in 2008, a ton of foreclosures. They worked their way through the system until about 2016. It leveled off. 2020, 2021, we had COVID. There were moratoriums on foreclosures. And I'll be honest, in 2022, once those expired, I anticipated to go back to that 400 mark just because there were a lot that were in potentially in foreclosure or waiting. We didn't see that. I think that is because sellers were able to sell them if they needed to, if they got in trouble because of that demand. So I think that's a sign that it is a strong housing market right now. Um, looking historically at what values have done, if we look back to 2019, which is gonna be the bars on the left-hand side, the white bars, and 2022 on the right-hand side, we can see that back in 19, our typical sales price or our most sold home was in that hundred to $150,000 range. By the time we get to 2022, that is now between 200 and $300,000. That is a lot of price growth. Um, and the low end of the market, as far as sales prices go, um, has all but dried up. If we go back to 19, there were houses that you could buy between 10 and $50,000. Uh, those don't really exist anymore. So sales prices have and continued to um, increase. So overview of the changes. Um, for Bonner Springs, I'm going to get a drink. I apologize. Mm -hmm. Should have brought that with me. Um, so for Bonner Springs, these are preliminary numbers. Um, I looked at an early abstract. We are showing a 19% increase in real estate assessments in the Bonner Springs boundaries. That's commercial, that's all property types. Um, and we also, I looked at, just to kind of gauge the impact or show what the impact would be, looked at a median single family residential property last year compared to this year, that increase at a median, so half are gonna be more, half are gonna be less, was uh, about $37,000. The taxes on that increase would be slightly less than $700 at current mill rates. And again, that's a median measure. Um, and I'll also point out that the numbers up here, they're preliminary as far as the assessment rate or the assessment increase, um, but it is sizable. Um, and houses, residential, increased at a faster rate than commercial because that's what we were seeing all across the county. Um, the assessment breakdown, and this is about how it was last year for Bonner Springs, 65% of the assessments are on residential properties, about 30% are on commercial, 2% uh, on vacant, and then farmsteads, those are residential parcels that have agricultural use land attached to them, so they're, they go in with the residential. Um, and that's 
typical Wyandotte County may be a little bit heavier on residential, but that is the breakdown of where those taxes are due, or the values are distributed. Um, and like I said, these are big increases. We've got some public meetings set up, um, two, three this week, um, and additional ones if there's a request for them or a demand. Happy to go out and talk with the community about this because I think it is impactful um, and want to be available to discuss it. We've got some videos up on UGTV and Facebook, um, reaching out to neighborhood groups currently. So anybody that would like to have us come and speak about this or have a visit about it, happy to do it. Um, like I said, we've got some public meetings this week. I think I'm going to be adding a couple more uh, just to let people know about how they can appeal, when they can appeal, and all the rest of it. With that said, um, that's all the presentation I had, and I'm hoping there's questions. Bert was uh, uh, probably six years, so a home that has, you know, if they were at the very, if they had gotten praise just before the large increase, they've been kind of riding underneath the. Uh, so we value every year. We just inspect once every six. Okay, so every or month is reappraised. Every year. Okay. Um, and if we get indications like building permits, we get notified when there are fires or other damages, we'll go look at those. So the building permits, but every house at least once every six years gets a visit from us, eyes on. Um, well, we've got a bunch of ways to do it. Typically, what they're going to do is look and confirm, yeah, it still looks like it's in okay shape. If it looks like something's off, they're going to get out, uh, go knock on the door uh, for somebody home, interview, um, and then walk around, measure two sides just to confirm or confirm what they saw that looked different. We've also got um, what's called oblique photography. It's shot every two years, and it's a 45-degree angle from a plane, and through math that I don't understand, uh, we could measure two points and get a, a linear measurement on a wall distance or do stuff that way. But eyes on updated photo at least once every six years, and for most places, it's more often than that just because you get permits, you get sales, you get other things that, that trigger us to go out and have a visit. Um, if I sold my house for, let's say, I decided that I wanted to sell it for less. Would the evaluation, the taxes go down on that? Or what would that do to the existing people around you? Sure. Um, so when we look at sales and when we confirm them, we're looking to see if they sold it at fair market value, which is between a knowledgeable seller, knowledgeable buyer, marketed. Um, so, I mean, in that hypothetical, if everybody did that, well, that would kind of become the market. Um, but one sale doesn't make a market up or down, I guess is what I would say. It would be a data point for us. If the prices of the homes do go down, do the taxes of the existing ones go down also? Because it's not listed something that you said earlier that um, if, uh, because of the people paying exorbitant fees right now, which is their choice, of course. Um, it uh, has a tendency to raise any fee. What it does is it flags you to go, oh boy, we could raise everybody else's property tax and be just as bad. Well, um, so two things. I'll answer the first, I'll answer the question, then I've got a statement. Um, we've had in the recent past, when the economy crashed and we had the foreclosure crisis, uh, appraised values decreased at the count, we decreased county appraised values. Um, and at least for the UG, that caused a necessity to raise the mill levies. But we have seen it, um, and if it happens again, and I don't think that it will, um, we're charged with setting fair market value. That's up, down, or sideways. So if we have something that, that happens and, and the market crashes, for lack of a better term, I'm going to follow that because that's the market. Um, and then the other portion is, talked a bit about it in here earlier, valuation and budget, they're two separate processes. There's two parts to that tax bill. Um, what we're trying to do is get that fair market value on every house, and we're just, the way that I view it, 
uh, portioning what portion of that bill goes to who based on what the value of that asset is. Um, so then help me understand, better understand, and I appreciate your explanation. Um, a house in our neighborhood was appraised at approximately $190,000. Well, it got into something that you addressed earlier where people were putting bills in court and got into a bidding war and it sold for over $250,000. Fair market value up, you know, I mean, you can define what fair market value is if you want to, and I'm not going to, but to me, <laughs> that wasn't it, and it just literally drove the price because everybody else was trying to get in front of the court to bid. I um, mean, I can give you, I may have talked with you on the phone, but uh, when over the years, our house has approximately, you know, appropriately gone up, you know, with everybody else's in the, in the neighborhood. Two years ago, everybody else's, the average was approximately 23, 24, 25 percent, and it's went up 40, 70 percent. Yeah. And I did some of the speaking about it, and they, you know, it was a very enjoyable conversation. A very, very enjoyable conversation. <laughs> it wasn't too enjoyable on my part, but um, I, I, just, I just find that very, very hard. And honestly, my trust and my confidence the office, not necessarily you personally, um, it's stretched. And it, then when we got, we saw ours went up another 27000 this year for a total of $108,000 in two years. And I'm finding, I, I don't know, I'm just going to stop there. Because well, I'm sure. Um, and, and I, very personal. And I, 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 I hear and understand your concern. I guess I'll say that. Um, part of the problem that we, well, it's not a problem, part of the reason for that is, um, again, we've got a statute requirement to look at fair market value, wherever that leads. That's up and down. Um, and I don't know about yours personally. What I'll tell people in that situation um, is do come in, have a visit with us, um, look at it. It'll do a couple of things. Um, if there's something incorrect, if we've got something wrong, we're going to fix it. Because again, the appeals process is part of getting to that fair market value. Um, and then the other part is we can show you, hey, this is what we did. And if it makes sense, hopefully it does. Um, but at least we can have that conversation. Well, I, I appreciated that. And I, I appreciated that. And I believe it was with you. And also with the other people that were there with us, whenever we did a Zoom meeting and stuff. And uh, it wasn't anything just, I didn't feel like it could be, could be explained where I could understand it, but there were other people that did that, and I don't want to take 100% of the blame on that. Um, if there's some people in our town, in our community of Bonner Springs that can't take these hits anymore, and that's what's really starting to kill me, because sure. it's, I know you folks have got a particular way you're doing things, and I don't totally understand it, but yet again, that shouldn't be up to me to come by and, and personally visit with you so that I can better understand it. I, I understand. There's families here that can't take these anymore, and you guys have got to stop. You've got to sharpen your pencils. You can't keep hitting our families out here with these, with these increases. You know, I... No, it's, I'm not saying you do it personally. You don't. No, and, and I, again, I absolutely, um, I mean, I visit with a lot of people every day. So I, I, I do hear where you're coming from. And that's part of the reason that I wanted to come out and do these visits um, is to talk about just the idea that if values increase, and, and they did, and they did in a big way, there's, there's a way for taxing entities, and that's all taxing entities, to have an impact to offset that. Um, and not saying that it should or is a good idea, a bad idea. Um, but when we've had two years of sizable increases, um, if the mill levies stay the same, that is a great big impact on taxes. And, and I recognize that. Um, I hope that our appeals process is, is fair, and I think it is. Because that's my philosophy and my instruction on this, 
is if somebody comes in and there's something wrong with the way we've got the house listed or something wrong with that value that we've established, I want it changed every time because it doesn't do anybody any good to have a value that's not market value in this system. So I, I hear your concern, um, and I, I hear the concern from the community. I absolutely do. Um, and so that's, that's where our portion of it is. And like I said, I, I do understand. In fairness to you, too, I believe that you were the one that talked to the public and appreciated your honesty and the way you dealt with it. And it's something I did pick up on that you were, you were concerned something I wanted to repeat as well, but it's something I'm really positive that you said that the first time you heard that, I could feel that there was a genuine, that you were seeing, you're seeing this out there. Absolutely. So for the um, members of our community that would like to perhaps appeal, what's the, what is that process okay. exactly? So um, the valuation notices that went out, they're on the back of them or a form to fill out and return to our office. We will get an appeal set up. There are several ways to go about it. Phone is the most common. We also offer Zoom. Um, and in person's kind of on request. We found that the phone hearings are pretty popular. Um, so that, get it back to us. We'll get a letter sent out 10 days before the appeal hearing um, with a little bit of instruction and a time and date. Once you do it, 20 minutes of the conversation, we're going to sit down, we're going to say, okay, here's how we have your property set up in our system, for lack of a better term, talk about condition, bedroom, bathroom, decks, just all the physical characteristics of the property. We're also going to get a copy of the comp sheet, which is the document we use to value the properties and review that, say, you know, this sale, this sale, this sale, um, and then listen to concerns and evidence um, from there make a decision, uh, again, notice by letter, and then um, if a person disagrees with that decision, there's instructions on the back of that result letter on how to go to small claims, which I think is where you went, um, and then further on to BOTA if that's desired. I appreciate that. Is uh, What percentage of the appraisals are appealed, and then what what percentage of those appeals is are successful? Sure. Um, let me make sure. Around two percent. Thirty percent of that two percent. Um, but I can say for context, if we've got something wrong, it's going to change every time, because I I really don't want bad values out. Um, this property tax system works if everybody's at fair market value. So if we've got something wrong, um, I want it fixed. And um, I appreciate you coming out and giving us this information this evening. I see that you'll have a public meeting tomorrow night at uh, George Mine Community Center here in Bonner Springs. I think. On the 14th. We're at Beatrice Lee tomorrow and that's the fifteenth. The fifteenth for George Mine. Oh, they haven't switched around here. Well, and we had some confusion about that. The the pre the press release that went out had it the fourteenth and the fifteenth. So yeah, that's where we're at. Um, and, and encourage people to come to either uh, because it's going to be a bit more information about if what property values are doing countywide. If you could make sure Commissioner Stites gets the updated information as soon as possible, I'd appreciate it. Yep, and I actually sent that over to the commission this morning because we started looking at the week and said this one out here, and it's different, and kind of going with what the press release was. So I apologize for that. Certainly. The one that Mr. Stites shared just today that he just got there shows the 14th at George Mine and the 15th at Beatrice Lee. Is that incorrect? That is incorrect, and I'll figure out why. Like I said, I sent an updated one about 3 o'clock once we figured out that we had everything reserved. Okay, I will uh, go check it out. Thank you. Thank you.
And again, I apologize for that. Yeah, very good. Well, I appreciate, uh, yeah, like I, I said, I the communication. Um, when you look at sales that have occurred around the area, do you have a certain radius so smaller from what that, where that home is located at? Sure, not a radius exactly. So what we do is we say we're called models. Um, and I don't have a copy of the map. But basically, it's going to be Bonner Springs is going to be the model for okay, Bonner Springs. The reason Springs. I ask is that, you know, you mentioned about the level of home values being higher. Now, I don't know if that's because of the housing stock itself. But I know at one point in time, uh, the house that valued in Johnson County, similar property was valued much higher. Correct. Since we're right there on the edge of Leavenworth County, Johnson County, I didn't know if some of our values here were utilizing those appraised values in it for setting the housing value. So they are not. Okay. Um, strictly in Wyandotte County. Strictly area. Wyandotte County and strictly within that model, which is going to be Bonner Springs corporate limits. Anything else? Think so I just encourage any of the citizens uh, that would like an opportunity to discuss this with you to come to the meeting or set up an appointment. Appreciate it very much. Thank you all. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you both. Moving along, we'll have an opportunity for citizens' concerns about items on tonight, not on tonight's agenda. You're welcome to stand and address the city council. All those issues will be taken into consideration and, if necessary, placed on a future agenda. Anyone like to address the City Council tonight? The item's not on the agenda. All right. Uh, uh, oh, the agenda. I have one. There should be some right down here, usually. That's that piece of paper I gave Craig earlier. Oh, <laughs> they got one. Thank you, Pastor. Um, uh, but seeing none, we'll move along to the consent agenda, which uh, includes the minutes of the January 23rd, 2023 City Council meeting and claims for city operation. I would entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to accept the consent agenda as presented. Second. Very good. Moved and seconded. Anything to be pulled by staff or citizens? Nope. No questions or concerns. Vote, please. Yes. Stevens? Yes. Gibbs? Yes. Wood? Yes. <clears throat> Mensingham? Yes. Salmon? Yes. Motion passes. Very good. On to new business, uh, the first of which is the Child Care Sustainability Grant. Uh, hello, <clears throat> I'm Nathan Grungart. I'm in for Justine tonight. Uh, she couldn't make it. But basically, we're asking you to approve some additional funds that were granted to us to address our diversity issues. Very good. For work? Uh, for Camp Great Adventure, our summer camp program. Very good. Thank you. Anything else to add by staff? Uh, just quickly, the, if you all recall, the Good. Any other questions by the citizens? Seeing none, I'd entertain a motion. 
the mayor, I'll make a motion to approve allocating the child care sub its grant <laughs> funds in the total amount of $42,400 as approved. Second. Moved by Mr. Shannon and seconded by Mrs. Woods. We'll start with discussion right down here. Mr. Stevens. Nope, nothing written from you. Sir? Yes, I do remember when we applied for that, that the flooring was an eligible um, part of the grant. And so I don't think any of those uh, funds got already been approved or eligible eligibility is approved. Sir? Yeah. Uh, seeing none, vote please. Shannon? Yes. Long? Yes. Beckingham? Yes. Woods? Yes. Gurley? Yes. Kip? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Very good. Thank you. Congratulations and good luck. And uh, the kids may have to be on gravel. Painfully, painfully clear weather. Item number two, water treatment plant property acquisition. Good evening, everyone. Frank Abart, Public Works. Got a property acquisition for your consideration tonight. This is associated with the water treatment plant improvement. Specifically, it's the extension of the line from the, I'm going to say it used to be the uh, Sonic, no longer Sonic, but roughly that location uh, onto the east for the connection to the Lake of the Forest subdivision. And I'm going to start with a Plan A, Plan B, and Plan C. So I hope that I'm not going to confuse the heck out of everybody. But uh, when we started this, originally our Plan A was that we knew the owners of this property were going to be going to develop this property. They told us as much. We had several meetings with them. Yes, we're there. They're in the city of Edwardsville, and they were going to go ahead and get this developed. And there would be, of course, utility easement with that development that would be required, it would also be free. Uh, so anyway, that, for a variety of reasons, not necessarily all uh, known to us, those did not happen. Uh, so our plan B was, well, OK, we'll go into the state right away, which we've done before. In fact, we have a sanitary sewer fourth main in that right of way as well. After talking with KDOT, uh, they have some rather stringent requirements and restrictions that were going to drive the price of this placement well over 120000 We know it was going to be a minimum of $120,000 to put this line in the right-of-way. So that caused us to pursue Plan C, which is go back to these landowners <laughs> and try to talk about an acquisition. Uh, we did a lot of talking and, and with some prodding from the, the city manager, I finally had to request that we go to condemnation because I just wasn't getting anywhere with these folks. And uh, so we pursued condemnation and pretty much at the 11th hour then, they came to a, an agreement. And uh, that's kind of where we're at today, that agreement in Total expense of 72924 So this does represent a minimum project reduction cost of $47,076, but that's from Plan B. Originally, this was going to cost us nothing. That was the idea. But it didn't work out that way. And so I'd be glad to entertain any questions you may have from that confusion I just threw at you. <laughs> well, that <coughs> Try to least, summarize the best I could. Yeah, that, that at least uh, the first question I uh, will go ahead. Any other staff input? Just um, maybe to note, I mean, this is a permanent line. I mean, there's a little bit different than our typical um, right-of-way utility. Um, this is ours that are
little new <coughs> ice, but I think that's what you I should clarify as well, it's permanent easement and also there's temporary construction easement, but that'll go away once we get the line installed. We're good. Any other staff? Anyone? I'd entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to approve the agreement for acquisition of permanent and temporary easement down K32 for the water treatment plant project in the amount of $72,924 and authorize the city <coughs> manager to execute the document. Second. We moved by Mr. Stevens and seconded by Mr. Shannon. Uh, first question I have is you, we were started down the path of condemnation and um, would we have recognized any savings if we continued down that path over this? It's hard to say. I doubt it uh, because uh, it, what they were doing was they were using the original appraisal that we had produced is, is actually the basis for this assessment. Um, so there's already been a full-blown appraisal done of this property and uh, their attorney and our attorney somehow got together and said, okay, let's just use that. There's always a chance could have been more, could have been less. You know, Plus the you get, extensive condemnation. Yeah, right? the condemnation is <coughs> essentially getting three issue. different appraisers together to look at it, and then a judge decides based on that information, and who knows. I didn't know if they were trying to circumvent a loss. And it, so. Maybe they were. I don't know. But it was 12 15 hours before it was too late. <laughs> so they pushed it right up to the limit. But. Other questions, concerns, comments? We'll start down here with Mr. Shannon. So if they decide to develop this property, can they then tap into that service? Are we saving them all of that infrastructure cost? That's a really good question. And my answer is probably not because it's in the city of Edwardsville, and we've had discussions, actually we had these discussions when we were trying to negotiate acquisition of this easement, and uh, BPU, our friends that are the other utility, have pretty much been very clear that they feel like that is their territory and they would challenge any infringement like that. Uh, so the question has come up. Probably not, no, um, I but I think bearing in mind that it would be an auto dealership that would come here on a annual rate, so it, it would be getting a free ride from the question to come up with some level of understanding of what their jurisdiction is on all property. Just as an example, all out of town rates, which this is outside our sale limits, would be at least, at least at this time, 150% of what the in-city rates are. Yes, we're going to go ahead and just turn that valve. Uh, they would prefer it that way, so they just don't want it to be used. And we're actually going to talk more about that on the next item. <laughs> are there some, uh, are there uh, different restrictions uh, with a permanent easement versus the right of way, utility right of way? Um, I think it's not so much restrictions from the standpoint of our use of it, but more so with other utilities utilizing it. So, um, a cable TV provider would not be able to go in and use a private easement to run their line, whereas if it was a right-of-way and they had a franchise agreement with the city, they would be granted through that franchise agreement the ability to use that right-of-way to run cable TV for free. Um, our use is also restricted to 
in the landowner could develop on top of that property line? Correct. Yeah, there would. Uh, yes, there's minimum. Yeah, you you can't build a building on top of it or anything like that. This is primarily a subterranean underground. Right. I just didn't easement. know what the restrictions were. Yeah, yeah, they can put some landscaping permanent. and stuff on top, but you know, they, yeah. nothing permanent. Yeah, Anything else? No other questions, concerns, comments? Vote, please. <coughs> Stevens? Yes. Skip? Yes. Sterling? Yes. Wood? Yes. Abraham? Yes. Long? Yes. Gannon? Yes. Motion passes. Very good. On to item number three, the water treatment plant, change order number one. <laughs> Where's Bob when you need him? <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> I'm sure I'm going to hear about it later. Um, oh, he's calling in right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good evening, Frank Abart, Public Works Director. Uh, before you tonight with a change order number one for the water treatment plant. Uh, I'd like to, I guess, just pretty much frame that virtually all of this change is being driven uh, because we needed to generate fire flows. We needed to produce fire flows in this new lines construction into the Lake of the Forest subdivision. Now, there again, this was a change in plan because originally we had planned to go ahead and utilize that line that you just referenced up on the north side. And in fact, there's a line along 32. We were going to utilize those just like we are today for primary use, only we were going to use those for fire flows. To assure that we would always have fire flows. That significantly reduced our footprint where we were going with this pump station. That significantly reduced our costs. As you can see, uh, this is a request for $786,964. And uh, mainly what this is is to up upgrade the pumps, both the number and the size of those pumps. Uh, I know we're, we used to have, I think, two primaries and one backup, and they were way smaller in horsepower. And now we're going to have to have five pumps, and all of them are going to have to be larger to, so that we can assure fire flows into that subdivision. Uh, because we go to that expense, it will help us in the future for future development up over the ridge because now we're going to have the pumping capacity to move water and hopefully supply in the future a way to service areas north of this subdivision as they develop. There's been some discussions about the Boy Scout properties and other points on north of there that are inside the city limits, but the only people at this point who can service those are BPU. Uh, so this will set the stage for that future development as well. Um, it would have been my preference not to do this just because of the added cost, but I was not able to reach an agreement with BPU uh, that was even remotely close, and I don't know if they thought that they just had me over a barrel or that I wouldn't dare do it or what, but uh, I think it's in the best interest of the city to move forward with these changes. And uh, without getting into a whole bunch of detail, uh, I better just stop and ask if there's any question, and I'll get into as much detail as you'd like. Very good. <laughs> any other staff, citizens, questions, concerns? This money comes just. It would be provided through the state revolving fund grant. That's not a grant, it's a loan. It's a $30 million loan for this project. And if it is not eligible for that, it would come from uh, the water fund. So the water treatment plant that we're putting in was eligible for a 
thirty million dollar revolving loan fund from the state and that's the money we're using to put that in and we pay that back over out of the water fund and if it's not eligible expense as per the water treatment plant like he said it would come out of our water fund which is the <coughs> water bills uh, well they've been going up um, and, and uh, they'll continue to go up but uh, that's a part of the water bill the water fund uh, no other questions or concerns? I'd entertain a motion. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion to approve the change order number one for the water treatment plant project in the amount of $786,964 for upgrades to support fire flow requirements to Lake of the Forest subdivision. Second. So moved by Mr. Shannon and seconded by Mr. Stevens. So one thing you made mention of, um, this is um, uh, trying to negotiate with the BPU to use those lines would have uh, made this not as necessary uh, in the time being, but uh, with future development, we would still be beholden to them. We made a commitment to have appropriate fire flow to um, all parts of our community and uh, Lake of the Forest is certainly that and relying on others to do um, provide the services that we are responsible for probably not the primary or best use of our resources so I appreciate that I know it is expensive but um, this is something that uh, fire flows to Lake of the Forest have been an issue for a long time and BPU um, certainly could be a better neighbor, but we're, we're this is the way we work through it. Uh, questions, concerns, comments, and we'll start right here. Other than providing services for our entire city, what's the benefit of connecting to Lake of the Forest and staying within the city limits? Is that really the driving factor as to mm -hmm. why we're farm right here? Yes, I, I'm, I'm going to answer, but I'm not sure I'm following the question. But, I, I mean, essentially the directive we got from the city council was, yeah, that we wanted to provide soft water product to the entire city, and that would include the Lake of the Forest subdivision. So we're keeping in task with that. What I was hopeful for was that fire flow is something you hope you never need, and you know, you might use very seldom. Uh, so I was hoping to just use that connection. It would have made them a little money, and it would have saved us a lot. Uh, but we could not come to an agreement on making that connection with BPU work. That so now I'm back to... The fire flow issue, or that was... Fire flow issue. Okay. Yeah. We still would have provided... Soft water. soft water, yes. We still would have been providing the soft water. Not at the pressure needed for. For a fire flow event. We will now if this passes. But, um, so they were all in that same situation? Pretty much. They, I wonder if they thought we would do it. <laughs> I think they kind of expected me to keep coming back with my hat in my hand and I quit going back. I don't know, I haven't knocked on that door for a few months. It doesn't seem to me as though they're interested in anything but selling water. And this is not the water they were selling before. Yeah, this is not the water they were buying before. That's probably a big part of it. Who was, who was in the meeting? Oh, I can see the guy's name. I can't and think of it. Let's go all the way up to Mr. Johnson. That would yeah. be BPU, so I doubt our commissioners be involved. But yeah. separate from the BPU. Yeah. Well, and I think there's probably more. There's more to it than just the adequacy of fire flows. There's also a question of of that line. Yes. That does service um, a little north of 110th Street, um, coming in, and it's just not possible that 
They do. Outside of yeah. future movies. Yeah, I mean that. That I think that's part of it. Um, where it's located, similar to our number two item, um, even though it's not on this slide. Um, so I, I, I think I'm to be honest that this is seems to me this is a, a silly point to. Um, it was always intended to try to off the city council's direction several years ago when this project went forward was the city wanted to ensure that it maintained its water rights and that we were serving our community and not beholden to other folks and that's why we reviewed uh, water one and, and region two and, and those costs um, were took up costs for, the, for those two entities and that's why um, in comparison to what So this project, again, for this item, it was solely to get compensation about, we always were gonna provide water to Lake Forest. It was just, it wasn't um, at the line size, the pump size, the line code, and all that. I think the added value beyond just the service Frank had mentioned, it does provide the opportunity to say, hey, you know, this is one step forward in terms of currently there are other areas that are not on Bonner water that there's a lot of things that we need to get to or areas that could be developed um, and that was just an area where we wanted to get some respite and see something happen this is just another step uh, in that road <coughs> that we would like to see uh, this would position the city this would position the city to take that next step if they so choose You, you wouldn't want to push it that far. You'd want to push it to the to an elevation up there to a reservoir and then let gravity do the work. But with these fire flow pumps, uh, you should be able to do that real easy. Uh, well, that's what I was going to let you guys do then. Uh, Nora, does the, our utility boundaries then run within our city limits? So right now I assume that's all this property north are part of 5 BTU right now? Um, some of them, Riverview is a an area that I can think of that would capture this area. Um, there's water, there's other wells and things like that. So if that's something that we wanted to do, we would be able to do that. I think we would just have to assert we want to take it beyond Lake Forest and Riverview is really. It's pretty much service with DPU at this point. Anything within the <coughs> boundary would be considered by utility. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. No, I don't believe there is, but but I think the agreement is going to be redone in the next 12 to 18 months, and I expect there's going to be some kind of connection fee uh, involved. They're going to want. I didn't know if there was a connection fee involved. Not yet. personally like the idea of having that option. If everything goes in the toilet, there's, there's one place that you can go to still get water. So I love the idea of having that emergency access, but you know, we're, we shouldn't sell the whole city to get it. Oh, south of the river, yeah. Yes, we do. This isn't, I, I just point that it's out. It's not that new. We no. have these types of agreements for these types of fire flows and other utilities. We have that, so I don't think that everybody that we would want to sell it to is going to want that, and that type of cooperation is going to be very important to us.
two two questions. Number one, um, thank you for looking out for the power flow for the farmers of Lake District. I think that's important. It may not be knowledge of a lot of people, but back in the 70s, we were told on the fire department that when you go up, if there's a fire outright to the forest, be very careful as to when you hook up to a fire hydrant, that with the pressure on the fire truck, you could collapse the hydrant. And that, but then I talked yeah. to somebody that was up there after they, they got the water and everything, and he said, Hey, my daughter told me about blew me out of the bathtub. He said had good city quarter water <laughs> there, but the families and stuff up there deserve. We are a part of that. We are, we are all one. We don't want to see we don't want to see a juggling act. You know, if they were two separate entities, one That's a good point. Care of the other. The second question is um, the third charge you had in the addition to the backup power generator. Um, is this one generator or yes. let's say that right now we have how many generators that are not capable of pushing? Right now we have an existing sanitary sewer lift station. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but it's right along the south side. Right. That's a lift station. It's got a backup power generator uh -huh. there. Again, this is one of the things we originally were going to have much smaller pumps and only three of them. And we were designing it so that we could use that existing uh, generator mm -hmm. for our backup power for these pumps. Well, now that we're going to have to have five pumps and they're going to have to be bigger, that generator's just not big enough. Okay. And so we're going to have to get a, a replacement generator. And uh, that one generator that we're going to bring in there is going to go ahead and operate both these pumps and backup systems, as well as the sanitary sewer pump I'm lift station. I envision that you had a number of pumps at that water treatment plant, and I'm thinking, well, if we could use those, and then you're going to have another. Well, pump. we're going to see if we can salvage the old one we take out, maybe at a different lift station somewhere. But we haven't had time to evaluate that just yet. Okay. So. Great. Well, but we know the one that's there is not big enough to do now what we had originally planned. So we were looking out for the families that live right there, and I think that that's very commendable. Thanks. We're going to get them some soft water. Oh, definitely. <laughs> well, and, and um, I don't want to – VPU has been a great community neighbor. Sure. Uh, providing us with a lot of water here in our time of need. And uh, – we're trying to uh, organize ourselves and provide this service so we're not beholden to others as we are right now. Yeah. Without, without that, it would be be pretty dry around here. So I appreciate all they've done. Uh, the yes. emergency interconnect at uh, 118th and 142nd will also be affected by this? Will those be maintained? That's, that's going to be part of an agreement that's going to be coming up with BPU. It's either the end of this year or the end of next year that that expires the current agreement for those interconnects. Well, I would certainly, uh, I would I certainly, want those to right, make, I would to certainly stay. imagine that would be in <laughs> both of ours, both the City of Bonner Springs Water Department and the Board of Public Utilities to maintain those emergency interconnects. Yes. Especially with that being so far from their water distribution system. That'll be a different topic that will have to come forward. Very good. Any other questions, concerns, comments concerning this change order number one? Could I add one thing? Please. One thing that I need to add to that motion is to make it subject to approval by KDHE. I forgot to add that. That is okay. my error. Um, Mr. Shannon made that motion. Yes, I did. Is that a, a I accept. Acceptable. acceptable in the second. Mr. Mr. I believe I made Stevens? the second and I'll, I'll accept. Okay, thank you. Very good. No other questions, concerns, comments concerning that? Seeing none, if you could read the motion, please, and have a vote. Voting on a motion to approve change order number one for the water treatment plant project in the amount of $786,954 
for upgrades to support fire flow requirements for Lake of the Forest subdivision subject to approval by KDAD. Lessingham? Yes. Gibbs? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Shannon? Yes. Wood? Yes. Shirley? Yes. Long? Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'm, no. I'm sure I will hear from Mr. Reese. <laughs> <laughs> I expected a grilling from him. Three quarters tonight. of a million dollars on the first change order, and we haven't broke ground yet. There you go. Yep. Um, that's the end of our new business. We'll move on to the city manager's report. Um, just quickly, I did want to. So um, I'm, I'm hopeful to say that that is not going to be an issue if we can move forward to sell that later on by the next week. Um, I, we don't know, but I think we can end up with that. <laughs> the, the, the main driver of this legislation initially was to remove the, um, oh, to rather to speed up the sales tax removal from the state side. So that was something that was then planned, approved in law. Oh. Oh, I'm so Is that better? That works. I can talk with you after the meeting too if that's all right. Um not sure if that's if I can go any further. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. Uh, the only other item I was going to mention, there we go. Yeah. All right. Now we're rocking and rolling. Um, the only other item I was going to mention is the strategic planning. Um, so the city council um, has a strategic planning session uh, scheduled for March 25th at 8 a.m. in this, uh, this room. The um, consultant we're working with will hopefully have a survey going out to all of you just to solicit some initial feedback on um, questions related to just visioning of the uh, the city, uh, where you'd like to see the city in 10 years, typical type of uh, strategic planning thing. So again, that's March 25th at 8 a.m. That's so all I have. Scheduled for two hours? Two hours, correct, yep. Because we want to get to the legislative thing at the last minute. You got it, yep. Yeah, where the legislators are meeting. <laughs> where they can hopefully talk all about the sales tax for on groceries. And how they didn't. Yeah. Moving along to city council items, and we'll start right here, sir. Madam, I have none. Thank you. I think it's wonderful that um, on Tuesday, March 28th, from 11 to noon at the community center, there's going to be a, um, a conversation with the police department how to protect senior citizens. I think that's a good thing. Yes. I mean, that's a good idea. Yep. That's what's very needed. Eligible for my AARP yeah, discount. I carry my AARP <laughs> card hey. happily. Okay. Get that. <laughs> I also am el eligible to participate in senior center activities. Okay. We expect to see you there. Well, I 
<laughs> when I got elected, I was not old enough, and now <laughs> since I've been mayor, I have aged in, I guess. So. Uh, and then your next step is Medicare. Yes. <laughs> uh, topic for possible future discussion. I know Edwardsville approved the extension of fireworks sales this year, beginning June 27th. I'll have to double check that on the newsletter, but I think it was the 27th through the 4th. Um, and whether that's something we need to discuss here to keep our long-term fireworks scene in the city. Yeah, I think the state extended selling time. Was that a state thing? And then it was, I think it depends on city ordinances up to not buy too much until we change the city ordinance. But yeah, we, we can take a look at it and bring it back, especially and in light of the state change. And I think the firework, I mean, they did remain, I think the time frame to display fireworks is the uh, same. It's the, the same, same. Yeah. correct, yeah. yes. But and then I think along with that, the Tell Me this year, the, the uh, person had decided they're going to allow fireworks this year. Mm -hmm. And so they'll have sales over there instead of we, selling. We have a pretty regular 15 or so fireworks scenes in the city, don't we? Yeah, it's typically between, I want to say half dozen, or excuse me, a dozen to 15. I know they dipped a little bit with COVID, but that's yeah, you might as well keep them in town. Too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mr. Falcon? I got to attend the uh, Penguin Fun this past year, Saturday, at uh, our Penny Road Recreation Center down there. It was ran out of the water supply. I really want to do that, but I don't have time. <laughs> 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 it, was, it was outstanding. We had uh, four or five police officers here. Uh, the police were here with the police department. The uh, fire department sheriffs were there. Uh, they were here with the Edwardsville Weather and the uh, Edwards uh, Surveyor for the Nine Thousand. That's great. That's wonderful. Yeah. Bethany, you're Bethany, no, nobody else. Very good. I did want to say mm -hmm. that I, on the building permit, that I read it. I, I didn't know you needed to get a building permit for a tent, but Christina pointed out to me today that yes, when they're bigger, <laughs> you know, it's just yep. easier. A lot of the fire, um, and then fireworks. Yeah, Hence, you have to have a permit for those. Yeah. And you do Certainly. have uh, fire extinguishers, those kinds of things. Um, would like to report that the Unified Government of Kansas City, Kansas did um, uh, select a permanent uh, county administrator. Um, his name is uh, Mr. Johnston, and I believe he'll be taking his post later this month, uh, towards the end of the month. And so uh, I look forward to reaching out to him and um, uh, getting to know him and him getting to know the city of Bonner Springs and all of our residents and our needs. So I'll continue to make my presence known at uh, commission meetings once a month and uh, encourage all the commissioners to recognize Bonner. Uh, it's second biggest city in there. Uh, other than that, um, a lot of other uh, questions concerns we did have one concern about the uh, uh, down on k32 and our uh, planning department took care of that very well and addressed those situations concerning different questions that individuals have had about some of the development on k32 and uh, if you have any questions concerning the screening or the uh, temporary uses down there you can sure reach out to city staff other than that, I stand for questions. Okay. Please. 138 to, oh, sorry. 138 to uh, Kansas Avenue where the east side shoulder has eroded and they were coming from. Yeah, I th um, it's temporary. I think what we're waiting for is it's a little bit more of an extensive fix mm -hmm. than a cold patch, which is the weather. Um, so I, I, I I don't know exactly what their time frame is on that, but I'll I'll circle back with Frank and try to get. Uh, that I knew there was a plan. Uh, yeah, there's a couple spots looks there. Looks like it's going to have to have some build up and. Yeah, yeah, and I and we've added some rock and, and things like that. I, I will say I have asked the Public Works to get through um, quickly um, the review of the streets for the street program this year. So as we're working through 138th, uh, as far as um, the reconstruction of that from. Uh, K32 um, north, the um, 
we're, we're also trying to tie in our just typical street mill and fill uh, work into that. So I'm hoping at the next council meeting or at the very uh, latest uh, April, there'll be a presentation back to you all uh, with exactly how that's um, hoping to come together for uh, eventual bid this year. Um, any others? Seeing none, I wish nothing but the best of luck to all of the Big 12 basketball teams that happen to be uh, still competing this year at the various levels across the country and Iowa State as well as Las Vegas, Nevada. Very good. Seeing no others, we're adjourned. <laughs> I did that nice. Yes, you did. Yes, you did.